Hey everyone, welcome to Malleus Gaming. I'm your host, the lovely Malleus, and in today's episode of Total Tactics, we're going to be covering gunpowder formations. I'll be showing off three different formations you can use in your battles so you can get the most use out of your boomstick. Let's get to it. To start off, let's first identify the key issue. Typically, your armies will deploy in a double line formation whereby you'll have a line of melee infantry in front, and then a line of ranged infantry behind them. This generally works well enough for units with bows or crossbows, because they can fire their shots in an arc. This allows them to fire over the front line as the enemy approaches, and once the melee units are engaged. However, units armed with gunpowder weapons, such as rifles or pistols, need a clear line of fire in order to shoot. If there is anything obscuring their line of sight, they won't fire their weapons. This can be solved by placing them in front of the melee infantry and then pulling back once the enemy is close, but this leaves your ranged troops vulnerable and all but useless once the melee starts. So how do we solve this? A checkerboard formation will allow for your melee and ranged units to support each other through strategic spacing. It's pretty simple to set up. Just alternate the unit cards through Control plus left click in the order you want and drag them out into a line with each unit forming a square. Then double click your ranged units and Alt plus left click drag them into position. You can place them in front or behind, but for the purposes of this video, I'll be placing them behind the front line. Set up your artillery in a third line to bombard the enemy and force them to come to you. And deploy your cavalry on the wings in order to deal with any flanking forces your opponent may have. Make sure your units are on guard mode so they don't chase anyone, and you're good to go. When deployed in this formation, the enemy troops will aggro onto your frontline melee fighters, but will be unable to walk through the gaps, provided you made them small enough. Your ranged units will in turn be able to shoot straight through those gaps, even able to target the enemy unit's flanks as they wrap around your melee blocks. These close-range volleys will cause incredible damage on your opponent's units, provided your front line can hold. By keeping your units in compact square blocks, it'll allow them to quickly change the direction they're facing should they need to shoot at something else. The checkerboard formation is easy to set up, decently maneuverable, and lets your ranged units fire very effectively. This makes it a very efficient formation, and it can serve as your mainstay battle line able to handle most any situation you'll find yourself in. It can, however, be vulnerable to artillery fire due to how compact your individual units are, as well as having a somewhat limited field of fire as your ranged units are forced to shoot through the narrow gaps between your front line. Additionally, if one of your front line units break, you'll have a massive gap in your protective line. So how can we solve this? The chevron's formation addresses some of the weaknesses of your standard checkerboard. First, your units are spread out in thinner lines, making them slightly less vulnerable to artillery. Second, by doubling up on your melee infantry, should one of them break you'll still have some protection in the other unit. Thirdly, your ranged units have full line of sight on enemy units, and so can fire to maximum effectiveness. The chevron's formation is a bit more complex to set up than the checkerboard. You'll have to set up your frontline troops in these chevron shapes, using any monsters or hero units as the quote-unquote tips to help endure the enemy assault. Your range units will then be deployed behind them, mirroring their formation. This will allow them to fire directly upon the flanks of the enemy units. This is devastating, as the bullets will travel down the length of the enemy unit meaning that any shot that misses its first target will simply continue on and hit the one behind it, maximizing your damage at close range. Much like the checkerboard, you'll have to make use of cavalry to intercept enemy flankers. However, the chevron units aren't as maneuverable as the checkerboard units, and so the inflexible formation can be vulnerable to being outflanked. So how do we solve this? The anti-cavalry diamond formation is to be used when you are horribly outnumbered by enemy cavalry units. It's especially useful for the notoriously slow dwarfs, who don't possess any cavalry of their own, 
and are thus particularly vulnerable to being outmaneuvered. By using our melee units to form walls on the top and bottom, this formation is designed to bait enemy cavalry into the kill zones on either flank. They'll be hard pressed to make a significant charge through the overlapping fields of fire, and any survivors who do make contact can be easily taken care of with any of your unengaged melee troops. Just be sure that the tip of the diamond facing the enemy army is secure and will be able to hold, as it will be facing the most punishment. Once the enemy cavalry units are taken care of, you'll be able to break your formation and sweep along the flanks of the remaining enemy units, putting them to rout and securing yourself a victory. Well, I hope these formations will help you out in the battles to come. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You'll really help the channel out a lot. If you have any questions, see anything you disagree with, or if you have any tips of your own, please let me know in the comments. You can find my socials in the description below, and I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!